Ladies and gentlemen, Strident Whistle. You've probably seen about a billion of these things drop while knocking out your strikes. And for me, this was one of the first strike-specific, non-nightfall drops that I found myself getting excited for in quite some time. I really do enjoy using the combat bows in Destiny 2, especially the precision frames. And Strident Whistle kind of fills a hole in the arsenal. Legendary solar bows have been a bit scarce since Weapon Sunsetting occurred. I believe that Tyranny of Heaven is the only other bow that fits that criteria, but it's a lightweight frame, and it is a Last Wish Raid specific drop. But Strident Whistle is not just a novelty because of that fact, it's a strong performer and a special feeling weapon, mainly due to one specific perk that it can roll. You're probably well aware of what that perk is, but we'll take a closer look at it in this breakdown. And if you do end up enjoying this video, liking, subscribing, or passing it along to some friends are all great ways of supporting the content and the Ironworker Gaming channel and your support is always greatly appreciated. Let's move on with the review though, with a look at Strident Whistle's stats and perks. Strident Whistle, as we've already established, is a legendary solar precision frame combat bow that can be seen dropping from Vanguard playlist activities as of Season of the Haunted. The base draw time is 684, which can be altered slightly through the weapon's perks. When taking a look at the base stats, like all precision frame bows, Strident has a 76 for impact, but very strong base accuracy at 74, the highest in the archetype currently but it is going to come up slightly subpar in handling, aim assist, and airborne effectiveness. For the string and arrow perks, I generally like to feed into the weapon's strength. If you require a quicker, more responsive bow, those options are absolutely in here, but for me, an extremely accurate, hard-hitting bow is ultimately what I want. The one I've been working with for the bulk of the season has tactical string, helical fletching, and an accuracy masterwork, essentially giving the weapon a plus 20 to accuracy and 15 to stability. You could max out the accuracy here if you swapped in high tension string or fiberglass shaft arrow. If you had straight fletching instead of helical fletching, this would pull it up to a 99. For the perk selections in column 3 and 4, like most standard playlist weapons, Strident Whistle has 12 perk options in each, which can make it a nightmarishly difficult task to get the exact roll that you want. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to go over all of these perks. But if you are interested in chasing down a specific role on this bow, head over to light.gg or d2gunsmith.com and have a look for yourself. I was very fortunate to find my preferred perk combo fairly early on this season. The battle-tested, tried-and-true Archer's Tempo in Column 3, improving the next arrow's draw time by 25% after landing a precision hit. And the newly added and extremely useful Incandescent perk in Column 4, spreading Scorch to nearby enemies after securing a kill. And this is the role that I'm going to be focusing on from here forward. If that combo is really not what you're into, there are some solid roles to be had on this weapon. Don't mind me, go do your thing. But if you would like to explore what an Archer's Tempo Incandescent Strident Whistle is capable of, let's move on to the damage and functionality testing. Alright, for the functionality, not a whole lot to touch on, but we do have a few points. We'll start out with something that I forgot to mention in the Stats and Perks section, the Vanguard's Vindication Origin trait. Final blows with this weapon grant a small amount of health. To find out how much, I took some damage and then let my red health bar refill. As soon as it paused before the shield started to refresh, I secured a kill. I captured a screenshot of the before and after and put it on a grid. I'm calling each block one unit of health. Full health in this case is 28 units. A single kill with Vanguard's Vindication seemed to refill about one and a half units, or roughly 5% of the total health bar. It's not much, but it definitely is something. To show the effects of Archer's Tempo, with the base 684 draw time still intact and the reload stat unaltered, I was able to fully draw and fire off two arrows in 2.15 seconds. And please afford me a little bit of wiggle room on these, I'm trying to touch the arrow off as soon as the perfect draw is achieved, but I am human. If we pull Archer's Tempo into the mix, we're looking at 1.92 seconds if the first arrow lands as a crit. When considering two arrows fired under the effect of the perk, 1.86 seconds. And while both arrows are seeing that 25% draw time improvement, it's only showing a 16% increase off of the base speed. Remember, when dealing with a bow, you do have to factor in that very short, but still present, reload speed. For the incandescent perk, securing a final blow with Strident Whistle will spread Scorch to nearby enemies. More powerful combatants and opposing guardians cause Scorch in a larger radius. Just eyeballing it, I'd have to say on a red bar target, maximum radius probably reaches out to about 5 meters. To test out the improved radius and applied Scorch stacks, we're going to pop over to PvP real quick, just for simplicity's sake. When downing an enemy guardian, and this should hold true for major targets in PvE as well, the Scorch radius can reach out to about 7.5 to 8 meters. For the Scorch stacks being applied, I am fairly certain that these do transition back to PvE one for one. So we'll move over to Mrs. Ironworker's perspective, and we can see that 30 Scorch stacks are being applied. If we want to boost that up a little bit, we can throw on the Ember of Ashes fragment and improve it to 40 Scorch stacks. Let's get on to some damage numbers though, but as always, do keep in mind, PvE damage numbers are variable and it will change depending on content scaling or enemy tier. This is why I try to keep all of my testing in the Conflux Lost Sector on Nessus versus Carl the Colossus to keep these damage numbers consistent and comparable from video to video. 
Versus Carl, Strident Whistle will score 10,923 points of damage on a crit and 7,282 points of damage to the body. Now, I would typically give you the maximum single mag damage next, but since bows don't exactly have a magazine, I'll just base it off of five arrows. They'll total out to 54,615 points of damage on all perfectly drawn crits. Time to draw and fire off all five arrows without the benefit of Archer's Tempo. I have clocked in at 6.39 seconds, so damage per second, 8,547. This will serve as the true baseline damage for all precision frame bows. With the help of Archer's Tempo, I was able to land 5 arrows in 5.75 seconds. Damage per second in this case, 9,515. About 11.5% better than our baseline damage figures. And for the collateral damage from the incandescent perk, we have blast and burn damage that we're dealing with. In this particular environment, the blast is going to deal 1,446 points of damage, diminishing based on proximity. This holds true for red bar against red bar, red bar against major, or major versus major. It, it doesn't matter. Some variants can be found in the tick damage though. When popping a red bar enemy next to Carl, the score trolls down from 512, seeing 9 total ticks. If we repeat the same process with a major tier enemy, scorch ticks begin at 625, netting 11 total ticks. Let's uh, convolute things a little bit more. With Ember of Ashes applied versus a red bar, blast damage is unchanged, but the scorch ticks here again start at 625, rolling down with 11 in total. Ember of Ashes versus a major enemy sees Scorch Ticks start at 737, with 13 ticks in total. What's that? You'd uh, like to add some more variables? Sure. If you have a damage buff, something like Radiant, both the Incandescent Blast and the Scorch Ticks will see increased damage. In this instance, 1806 from the Blast and 921 for the Scorch Tick start. Further compounding things, if you apply a spec mod in line with the enemy receiving the Incandescent Blast, in this case a major spec, damage will be increased even more. 1948 from the blast with 13 scorch ticks rolling down from 993. And my apologies for the lengthy incandescent tangent, but I hadn't really gotten into it too deeply with any of my videos this season, so I felt it was worth explaining. But Ironworker, you didn't test things out with the dragonfly spec. Oh, but I did. It has zero effect on the incandescent perk. None whatsoever. If you have it on, swap it out for something else. For Strident Whistle's performance in PvE, I think there are only two main things that make it stand out from the pack. But those two things can be pretty important. We've had some nice precision frame bows along the way, but they all more or less fill the same role. High single shot damage from long range, capable of efficient ad clearing and chipping down major targets while keeping yourself in a safe position. And as I mentioned in the intro, Strident Whistle fills that solar elemental hole for precision frames. So if you are a fan of this archetype, you have a viable non-sunset option to take in the content where you actively need to deal with solar shielded enemies. It's a legendary bow and obviously not as strong as Tiku's Divination, but then again, it's not burning your exotic slot either. But I think most would agree, it's the ability to roll incandescent that really makes it stand out. For one, it's just damn cool to down a single enemy in a pack and watch the rest of them burst into flames. And it is a little bit more forgiving than Dragonfly, since all you need to do is secure a kill, not necessarily a precision kill. And while the damage itself isn't overly impressive, it's still additional damage, which could lessen the number of arrows required to put an enemy target down. Plus, Scorch Stacks compound, so if you pick off a few enemies in rapid succession, you have a really good chance of seeing it ignition pop. And you also have the subclass synergy facet, any fragment that allows you to benefit from Scorch works very nicely with this bow, and really any incandescent weapon for that matter. Ember of Ashes, Ember of Singeing, Ember of Empyrean, Ember of Searing, they all could be very nice options. An artifact mod that I like to run with it, limited time only obviously, Rays of Precision. It is a lot of fun with Strident Whistle. While Radiant, Solar Precision Final Blows cause combatants to ignite. Precision frame bows tend to one crit red bars pretty reliably in most of the game's content. So when Radiant, as long as your aim's on point, it's quite easy to get that big boy blast damage from the ignition. You will have to give up classy restoration due to the energy cost, but I really enjoy it, and it's nice if you're cool with sitting back and plinking enemies from a distance. Drawbacks? It is a precision frame bow. Not super agile, and not super responsive at its core. Something that a lot of Destiny 2 players aren't really into. Then while the single shot damage is strong, the single target damage per second is very low. This is to be expected for bows of this archetype, but it still is a con of using the weapon. And if you are opting to go for the incandescent perk, while it is nice for ad clearing, it's not a buff that's going to directly increase your per arrow damage output. And then the massive perk pool with it being a vanguard activity drop. You could literally see hundreds of these things come and go and never find the exact roll that you're chasing. A sad state of affairs but it is what it is. Lastly, no anti-champion mod support for bows in Season of the Haunted. So right now might not be the weapon's time to shine. But with that, let's hop into PvP. 
As always, we'll start out with the damage numbers. Strident Whistle will hit for 152 points of damage on a crit, and 101 points of damage to the body. So just at base, lethal damage is only going to require two body shots. For the physical range, with this weapon being a bow, it's a non-factor. Full damage as long as you can hit your target. And precision frame bows are capable of one-shotting guardians in PvP. About a 27% damage boost is what you're going to need to accomplish that versus most resilience tiers. So from the available damage perks on Strident, Adrenaline Junkie times 5 and Rampage times 3 can get the job done all on their own. Or you could achieve the same results with Harmony's 20% damage buff and an empowering buff. I don't have a Harmony Strident, but I can demonstrate the concept with an Adagio Wolf Tone. 152 is the base crit. When Radiant, a 10% PvP damage buff, this moves to 167. The kill on Agent Sparkles procs Adagio. Just like Harmony, a 20% PvP buff. A single crit will now deal 200 damage. For the Incandescent perk, we already established that 8 meter radius, so let's take a look at the damage. The Blast will deal a maximum of 13 points of damage, accompanied by 3 Scorch Ticks at 6, 5, and 4. If you do have Ember of Ashes applied, you will see one more Scorch Tick, now going 6, 6, 5, 4. So that's 28 to 35 points of collateral damage. Not much in either case. Not enough to queen up a secondary target with a single arrow at least. Unless you do have an empowering damage buff. Even Radiant, with its minimal 10% damage increase, can allow for a one arrow cleanup if that arrow lands as a crit. For Strident Whistle's performance, this bow accomplishes what I want it to accomplish. I built it to be extremely accurate. Nothing irritates me more than feeling like I released an arrow right on target and seeing it miss. Now, I'm not maxed out, I'm sitting at 94 but this bow still feels extremely consistent. And I do have the stability pushed up a touch as well. This wasn't really a stat that I valued on a bow until Bungie tuned things so that stability helps curb incoming flinch. And while 56 isn't extremely high, it's solid. And every little bit could help. And I tend to favor precision frame bows because I like the idea of always being two shots away from a kill. And I'm still surprised how many times people try to re-peek and challenge a lane after one arrow is already stuck in them. It usually results in an easy cleanup. Then the Incandescent perk. While it isn't quite as impressive in PvP, it does have some redeeming qualities. Like we saw in the testing, it could result in a one-shot cleanup kill, but it's also a nice indicator. At longer ranges, enemy players are not going to ping your radar. Downing an enemy scorches an 8 meter radius, letting you know if there are any secondary targets in the area, and giving you a sense of their movement. This can help a lot with the choice between wait for another enemy player to pop out, or relocate. At closer ranges, this bow could be a nice pop and swap option. Whether you land a crit or a body shot, the opposing guardian has taken a chunk of damage. Usually this can be easily capitalized on with your offhand weapon. On top of all that, this is a good team support weapon. Even if you're not racking up kills, even if you're someone who usually doesn't slay out, if you can put arrows on targets, you're making your teammates' lives a whole lot easier. Cons. It's slow. It's bad in the air. It's not great when on the move, and in many cases, it requires a slower pace of play. These are things many Destiny players ain't trying to hear. Precision frame bows are an outlier when considering the fast-paced, movement-focused, closer-range gameplay of the Crucible. Even in a game mode like Trials, where things can progress a little bit slower, I don't see many bow users hanging up their way Monarch for Strident Whistle. And yeah, it is an exotic, but regardless of that fact, I think most would agree, if you are bringing a bow in the Trials, Le Monarch is the one you're reaching for. But when looking at it from a holistic perspective, I think Strident Whistle is a very good bow. The Incandescent perk makes this feel like a truly special weapon in PvE. And while only bow aficionados may learn to appreciate it in PvP, it can get the job done as long as you play to its strengths. But hey, if you did enjoy this video, like, subscribe, share it with some friends. Those are all great ways of supporting the content and the Ironworker Gaming channel, and your support is always greatly appreciated. And as always, if you have anything to add to the conversation, drop it down in the comments. I read them all and try to get back to as many as I can. It's tough sometimes, but I don't like anyone feeling like their voice is going unheard. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for checking out this, woo, a very lengthy weapon review. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.